Hello and welcome to Anton Math. Now, recall in chapter 5, when we were dealing with trig functions of real numbers, we had what was called the reference number. And the reference number helped us to find the value of trig functions in any quadrant just by using what we knew about the values of those trig functions in quadrant 1. Now in this video, we're going to talk about an analogous idea for trig functions of angles. So first, let's have a little example um, to kind of lead us into what we're going to be doing. So let's say we want to find cosine of 135 degrees. Now let's say we didn't have all the information from chapter 5 with real numbers. Uh, we're just looking at now a trig function of angles. And we want to know how we're going to find this cosine of 135 degrees. Well, let's take a look at where that is. If I draw my xy plane, 135 degrees ends up being about right here. Right, so this here is 135 degrees. Now notice that if I were to go all the way to the x-axis, I would have an angle right here of 45 degrees. Right, we know that in the upper half plane, there's exactly 180 degrees to go from the positive x-axis to the negative x-axis. So 135 plus 45 is 180, which means I have, a I have a 45 degree angle remaining if I want to go all the way to the x-axis. Now, what we can do with that is, let's take a look at if we had a 45 degree angle in quadrant 1. If I had a 45 degree angle here in quadrant 1, and let's say I took some point on my terminal side P, let's call it PXY, well, taking a look over here, let's say that my P is a distance R, and let's say on this terminal side of my 135 degree angle, I take a distance R to get to a point on that terminal side, then that point would be negative X, positive Y. Right? All we're doing is we're looking at the symmetric angle over the Y axis. I have a 45 degree angle here, so that's going to put me at xy. I just choose any point, we'll call that xy. Now, whatever my r is here, I'm going to travel that same r along the terminal side of my 135 degree angle, and that's going to put me at negative xy because I have a 45 degree angle between the x axis and the terminal side over here in quadrant 2 as well. Well, what does that tell me? I know that cosine of 45 degrees. Right, this is the same as cosine of pi over 4. This is square root of 2 over 2. And by our definition, I know that this is equal to x over r. Well, then cosine of 135 degrees. I know that this is going to be equal to negative x over r. Right, Not by definition, but because I've, I'm using x to mean this point right here. So looking here, my x value here is negative x over r. Well, negative x over r, that's the same thing as negative x over r. And we found up here x over r is root 2 over 2, so that means that my cosine of 135 degrees is going to be negative root 2 over 2. So what we're doing here is if we take a look, I've used what's called our reference angle. Just like with reference numbers, my reference angle now is going to be the shortest angular distance or the acute angle formed between the terminal side of my angle and the x-axis, either the positive or negative x-axis, whichever one's closer. So what I've done here is I've used my reference angle of 45 degrees, and I've used my quadrant information to determine my plus or minus, just like we did in chapter 5. So let's define what we've done here. Let theta be an angle in standard position. The reference angle, theta bar, associated with theta is the acute angle formed by the terminal side of theta and the x-axis. Okay, so let's have another example here just to see what we're looking at. Let's say that my oh, let's say that my angle theta is 5 pi over 3. So drawing that out here, I have this xy plane. five pi over three is about right here. Right? So if I start here, 
and go in the positive direction because 5 pi over 3 is positive. 5 pi over 3 is going to put me there. 5 pi over 3. Now my reference angle is going to be the acute angle formed by the terminal side of theta and the x-axis. So I want to know what is this? This is the acute angle formed by my terminal side and the x-axis, isn't it? So we're going to call this theta bar. This is my reference angle. And we can find theta bar um, just with some simple arithmetic. I know that if I do an entire rotation from my initial side, positive x-axis, all the way back to the positive x-axis, that's a rotation of 2 pi. So theta bar is going to be the difference between 2 pi and theta, isn't it? If I go the whole way, that's 2 pi. If I go the whole way, minus 5 pi over 3, that's going to give me what's remaining in the rotation. So this is just 2 pi minus 5 pi over 3, which is going to just be pi over 3. Now remember, uh, with what we've done so far, we've seen as long as we reduce our angle all the way, in other words, here 5 pi over 3 is reduced, whereas 10 pi over 6 is not reduced, right? I need to reduce this first, 5 pi over 3. As long as my angle is reduced all the way, we can easily find our reference angle, just like we did our reference number, by using this denominator. Anything that reduced ends up as something pi over 3, has a reference number of pi over 3. The same thing with over 6 and over 4 like we saw in chapter 5. Okay, so this is what we're talking about when we talk about a reference angle. Now we use this the same way as we used reference numbers in chapter 5. If we want to evaluate a trig function for any angle, we just find the reference angle theta bar. We determine plus or minus by noting the quadrant of my original angle theta. And the value of the function at theta is going to be the same as the value of the function at theta bar with the possible exception of the plus or minus sign. And we're going to get that plus or minus sign from step two. So let's look at some examples. Let's say I want to find cotangent of 495 degrees. Well, cotangent of 495 degrees first, we know that I can take out any increments of 2 pi or 360 degrees. Right? This is the same thing as cotangent of 360 degrees plus 135 degrees. Okay, so this is the same as just cotangent of 135 degrees. Right? Because for because of this step right here, remember in our previous sections we learned that 495 and 135 are what we call coterminal. So the value of the trig functions are going to be the same at these two angles, 495 and 135, from the properties of coterminal angles. Now, I need to decide with step two, is cotangent positive or negative at 135 degrees? Now, 135 degrees, I'm in quadrant two. I remember only sine and cosecant are positive in quadrant 2. So cotangent is going to be negative. And cotangent of 135 then is going to be negative cotangent of my reference angle theta bar. And here theta bar we saw in that previous example is 45 degrees, right? In other words, it's the difference between 180 and 135 because we're in quadrant 2. Now, cotangent of 145 is, or sorry, cotangent of 45 is 1, so my answer here is negative 1. Cotangent of 495 degrees is equal to negative 1. Now, let's do one with radians. Let's say I have sine of 16 pi over 3. So first, we want to find the coterminal angle with 16 pi over 3. That's between 0 and 2 pi. So this is sine. I can write this as, um, well, let's write this as 6 pi over 3 plus 6 pi over 3 plus 4 pi over 3. Right? I've just broken up 16 pi over 3. Now each of these are 2 pi. Right? 6 pi over 3 is just 2 pi. So this angle, 16 pi over 3, is coterminal 
with the angle 4 pi over 3. Now with step 2, I need to note is sine positive or negative at 4 pi over 3. Now 4 pi over 3 is going to be in quadrant 3, so sine is negative, and it's going to be negative sine of my reference angle, which here is pi over 3, or in other words, this is going to be negative square root of 3 over 2. All right. So that's how we use our, ref our reference angles. It's the same as reference numbers from chapter 5. We're just dealing with angles now. Now in the next section, we're going to um, extend upon this a little bit more. We're going to come back to our identities from chapter 5 in terms of angles and see some similar problems that we saw there. We'll see you there.